Uh, hi everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm Sajad Hussain, a reader at James Watt School of Engineering at University of Glasgow, and I'm going to talk about the strategies for boosting student engagement. Uh, uh, while mainly my talk will be focused on transnational education, uh, these strat strategies can be applied in some general settings as well. So, first of all, transnational education is the activity that involves it higher education institutes delivering uh, educational services and programs in other countries. And this in, can include um, overseas campuses, distance and online learning, joint and dual degree programs, as well as fly-in faculty. If I may uh, present some of the key stats, um, and I, I should say, some of these stats were very surprising for me as well. So on the left of the screen, we can see that um, UK higher education student number in TNE programs is quite strong. Um, um, it, in 2017, 18, it was reaching around 700K. There was a dip, uh, not sure whether it was because of COVID, but still it's uh, getting better in 2021, 2022, it's uh, five, uh, around 550K. Uh, the division of the um, uh, different aspects of T and E, uh, we can see that a distance or online learning uh, occupies roughly 30% of that. And then collaborative provisions where joint and dual degree programs, franchises, contribute to roughly 40%. And then um, uh, there are some standalone uh, overseas campuses, and then 22 or 22.6% of the programs which are offered, uh, where the students are registered at the overseas partner organization, uh, but they take their studies mainly in their overseas countries. Now, Around 75% of UK HEIs are engaged in some form of TNE, and this, this is a big number. And Asia hosts around 50% of these TNE students, and roughly 12% of those are from China. So one in eight TNE student uh, comes from China. So it's a big market, especially for UK uh, higher education institutes. Uh, the program I am uh, working for, it's uh, Glasgow College UESTC. It's a joint degree program between University of Glasgow and UESTC in Chengdu, where I am um, uh, here this week. Uh, we do the teaching in uh, block mod, fly in, fly out model, where we fly out to China for a week or two weeks, do the block based teaching and then return to uh, Glasgow. So we have um, roughly uh, 3,000 students in um, steady state. The, the program started in um, 2013. We recently celebrated the 10 year anniversary. It's mainly in electronics and electrical engineering uh, with some changes in the flavor uh, that is triple E with communications and microelectronics. And last year we started the same these programs at another location in China uh, called Hainan. Right, so the challenge of, uh, challenges of TNE, um, especially in China, but again, it will apply to um, some other TNEs as well. Uh, so the literature says that uh, uh, the Chinese students, um, they have this face saving um, harmony and collectivism um, that, uh, that influences their, the way they communicate especially in a setting where there are large number of people around and uh, and they, they prefer to do the indirect communication so instead of uh, for example raising the questions within a classroom uh, they would like to see you either private or they might like to write to you so the difference in culture learning styles so for example uh, while many of the western institutes uh, um, advocate for student-centered learning, the Chinese uh, educational system is mainly uh, uh, instructor-focused. Uh, 
the language barrier is another um, another barrier that can that that impacts the successful student engagement and the time zone difference is another factor because when uh, people are going to sleep in one location the other side is waking up and it, at times it become it delays the response to the queries of the students and therefore um, there is a lag and what i personally found was that the technology and especially the sp uh, social engagement platform can play a very uh, vital role to enhance the student engagement so i will give some examples of the tools that i have trialed and uh, there these will be a diverse range of uh, tools um, ranging from uh, simple polling uh, tools to uh, collaborative learning approaches um I've been using these tools even pre-COVID, uh, but during COVID, the use of these tools have uh, enhanced, um, increased a lot, and the availability of different resources have become uh, widespread. So I will start by uh, a, a very simple and very effective um, uh, way of engaging with a student is via the polling. Uh, some of the tools are Slido or Polls Everywhere and even Zoom and teams can uh, support the polling and what why do we want to do that um one feature in some of these tools is that you can get anonymized student participation and what i felt especially in the context of china people don't want to attach their names to what they are saying so you can collect anonymized uh, uh, responses from the student that, that can enhance the student contributions and then within your lecture setting you can set up these quick polls and get a very um, uh, very efficient uh, um, feedback on how you have been teaching or how your concepts have been delivered to the students and you can quickly adapt your teaching methods accordingly so uh, ju just as an example i wanted i, I gave them um, a lecture on something then i gave them a short quiz look looking at the uh, is the the stats from that uh, polling i found that students have got this idea and i've been able to successfully uh, deliver that concept so i need to move on further similarly for with the weather uh, with a, a word cloud you can quickly see how the key concepts are being uh, taken up by students so you can um, adjust your uh, teaching methodology accordingly Another tool that I've tried, it's called Piazza, uh, but the same kind of uh, um, impact can be achieved with the uh, different tools like Teams and Slack. So Piazza, it's, uh, it's a collaborative and peer research learning platform and uh, where students can collaborate in not only asking, rather they can uh, help to respond and resolve some of the queries. And what it helped was, that it reduced the uh, response time drastic, drastically. Because even if you are sleeping in Glasgow, other students who are here in China, they can respond to their uh, friends' queries, and then the students can get a quicker response time. Uh, just a snapshot here, uh, the, the type of stats that you can um, get from uh, Piazza, you can get a list of top contributors, which you can incentivize somehow, that the top contributors will get some sort of certification or something. You can get um, see how many questions were asked, how many questions were answered, how many contributors. The key uh, stat here for me is that the average response time was uh, around 20 minutes, which is an excellent achievement. And um, you can simply endorse the student questions so students can answer and you can endorse those questions. So moving to the next is the use of microsoft microsoft uh, streams and forms so in the in the context of uh, blended learning or online learning what you can do is um, when you have your videos uh, mostly in my case i used to have short videos to reinforce the key concepts and then i embed the quizzes within those videos so when the students are watching those videos, um, they are taken to a quiz basically, which is Microsoft Form, and you can easily see how the students performed on those quizzes. So there is this eco cycle that 
how many students are watching those videos, how many are actually attempting those quizzes, and how much uh, is the perf their performance, so you can get a better idea of uh, how the students are doing or in engaging with your content. Gamification is another uh, another um, tool that can easily be um, uh, um, embedded into the academic practice. For example, in Moodle, I've used this level up um, gamification tool, so, um, and there are other um, Moodle plugins which are uh, very useful, like the badges. So basically, what you can do is you can set up your uh, uh, um, uh, um, your uh, uh, plugin, and uh, I just realized that I <laughs> pasted the same image twice. Apologies for that. So, uh, so just imagining on the <laughs> on the left hand side, you can set up your um, uh, your level up game by giving different points to different activities. So, for example, if the student um, asks a question on Moodle, they can get 100, 500, 1000 points. If they if they log into Moodle, they get 10, 50, whatever you want to set. And if they download a material, they can get a certain number of points. So you can set um, uh, different rules. And accordingly, you can see the letterboard that does, uh, who is leading on the letterboard in terms of the points. I've just anonymized this for um, uh, the reasons of uh, privacy. So at the end of the um, at the end of the course, what you can do is you can incentivize by saying um, uh, participation certificates will be awarded to the top three participants. Or in some cases, uh, we have given the some uh, customized T-shirts to our students. So some sort of small incentive can help uh, them to you know play these games and get engaged with the content. Right. Finally. Um, if we can somehow put and push all these engagement data into some sort of a dashboard, this is the uh, snapshot from an in-house built tool that we call Alarm Bell, is that we push all the Moodle teams and Zoom data onto this dashboard, and we can see how much the students have been attending the classes, how much they have been interacting in terms of uh, Moodle, and based on all these um, stats, we, what we can do is we can identify those students who are not engaging well, even at the initial state uh, stages of the course, so that um, reasonable and suitable interventions can be made to uh, bring them back and get them engaged with the content. So I will conclude by um, making some comments. Um, there are some specific um, challenges associated with the TNE provision. However, uh, the technology advancement, and especially during the time of COVID, the the ways we started to use uh, started to use the uh, technological tools, it's kind of a blessing in disguise to uh, boost the student engagement. Um, these stats can lead to the enhancement of learning and teaching procedures and policies because we have so so much data with the help of these uh, tools that we can uh, identify the issues with any uh, process or policy and timely corrective measures can be made so that the lag lagging students can be uh, brought back into the in the, into the loop and they can be engaged uh, with the content and finally obviously not None of our presentation can complete without the <laughs> without the mention of generative AI these days. I think it's going to play a wide, very vital role because the customized and tailor-made content is going to help us uh, engage the students uh, further. So that was all from my side. Thank you very much.